Good afternoon, good day to all of you. It gives me great pleasure today to speak to you on behalf of UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization here in Paris. I bring you warm greetings. The UNESCO mandate and strategy for biodiversity spans over 75 years now since its creation with its interdisciplinary mandate in the field of education, the older sciences, social, natural sciences, education, culture, and communication, UNESCO has shown the way over 75 years of how we can change mindsets to live together in peace on earth. Unfortunately, as we have all seen, the latest EPES report states very clearly that humans have failed to live in peace and in harmony with nature, and hence it has led to the current climate and the biodiversity crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic is a reminder that all living things are interdependent, including humans. If one part of the system fails, then certainly it impacts all of us. There is still time to redesign and to reorient our societies, our mindset and our economies to secure a more sustainable way. But we need to act now together holistically as one. So restoring the relationships between humans and nature and regenerating ecosystems, conserving the harmony of the ecosystems, amplifying the power of the youth are really the three pillars of UNESCO's intersectoral strategy for biodiversity in line and aligned with the post 2020 agenda for biodiversity. And within this framework of the biodiversity, uh, intersectoral program of work of UNESCO, we are looking at three different initiatives. Firstly, the UN Decade on Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, which is managed by the Intergovernmental Ocean Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO, the Coalition for UNESCO, which we are co-leading with UNEP, as well as, of course, the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration in our capacity as a collaborating agency. Now, what is the added value of UNESCO's contribution to the UN decade? What does UNESCO bring as an example? I'd like to share with you a couple of ideas of UNESCO's interdisciplinary mandate in the natural, the social sciences, culture, education, and communication, which is very unique today and absolutely necessary if we want to change our relationship with nature. We can explore diverse ways in which nature and culture are mutually reinforcing one another, interlinked, and the multiple evidence-based practices and solutions from all the unique network of UNESCO's designated sites will also contribute to the UN decade as examples. So in the context of pressing urgent planetary and socioeconomic challenges, the sustainable and innovative solutions require an efficient, a transparent, and a vibrant scientific community, not only stemming from the scientists who are warning us about the decline of biodiversity, but also from the whole of society. And in this manner, open science is a game changer. Therefore, the UNESCO's member states, 193 member states, tasked UNESCO to forge a way forward on the UNESCO recommendation of open science, enabling all societies to benefit from the advances of science and technology. And we hope that this UNESCO recommendation on open science will be endorsed by the member states in the general conference in November this year, later 2021. So dear participants, UNESCO's call for reconciliation of humans and nature through its programs actually favor a transdisciplinary cooperation of the scientific community, the indigenous people and local communities, but also the education sector, which is crucial for the protection of the cultural and the cultural heritage, and looking how it can be amplified by major leaders and actors of transformation. So the actions that actually result from these shared values constitute the culture of the living and the ethics of care that includes different knowledge systems and cultures coming together to value, to transmit diversity, the beauty and the richness of life on earth. And this event will be discussing how to invest in solidarity and the so solidary links between the human activity, the ethics of care, of living together, and the transformation abilities to understand and to respect other species. How can we empower the present and future generations to secure both individual and collective responsibility to stop the destruction of our common home our planet Earth. 
And here I would like to recall that in 1997, UNESCO's member states adopted a declaration on the responsibilities of current generation vis-a-vis -vis future generations. And UNESCO's mandate in designated sites dates back since its inception in 1945. These designated sites include the World Heritage Sites, over 1,000 of them, the 714 biosphere reserves, and the 169 global geoparks. So all of these sites cover 6% of the Earth's landmass, and UNESCO is working directly on nature conservation, preservation, and restoration. So it's really about people and about our great cultural diversity. Today, over 250 million people call biosphere reserves their home, and they're implementing restoration activities on a daily basis. It is part of the daily living practices. The natural world heritage sites and the core areas of the biosphere reserves protect some of the most intact ecosystems of the planet, and they can provide the basis for restoration efforts in wider landscapes. So the ambition today, which is to protect 30% of our planet, is an important goal. But it would be pointless if we continue to destroy the ecosystems which sustain life everywhere else. So as a partner of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, UNESCO is calling for, and UNESCO's ambition is, to change the mindset of 100% humans so that they can reconcile the rest of nature and everybody become custodians of Earth, our common home and heritage, and so that we can inhabit and share with other living species our common home. So in addition to halting destruction and restoring ecosystems, we need to restore and regenerate our relationship with uh, nature, with new ethical behaviors of care, responsibility, and solidarity. It is therefore very essential to complement the necessary physical restoration of ecosystems supported by sound science, uh, but also with the soft power of education and culture to achieve sufficient momentum, change mindsets, bring change in this critically important UN decade on ecosystem restoration. So dear participants, UNESCO is playing a key role in bringing indigenous peoples and local communities into the ecosystem agenda. UNESCO has joined the UN system by hosting the uh, IPES technology uh, technical support unit of indigenous people, local indigenous persons, and we are helping to move forward with multiple evidence-based approach to understanding and protecting ecosystems. As social and cultural norms identified as barriers for implementation of the strategy of the UN decade on ecosystem restoration, there is a need to better understand the linkages between ecosystem restoration, our cultural, spiritual, and ethical values, which should be further recognized, documented, and form an integrated part of both the policy and on the ground level uh, implementation. As the only UN with a specific mandate in the field of culture, UNESCO carries this responsibility, notably through its six culture conventions, including the 1972 World Heritage Convention, the only global normative instrument which addresses both nature and culture and even its linkages, as well as the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage. Under the Education for Sustainable Development 2030 framework for the period 2020 to 2030, UNESCO is a lead agency and government, schools, educators, young people, indigenous people, urban rural communities, traditional leaders, communities are all encouraged to incorporate ecosystem restoration into the formal and the non-formal education sector for lifelong learning. It is worth noting that the Bonn Conference concluded last week, the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development, and called upon UNESCO to actually include in core curricula education for sustainable development, climate action, and a better understanding of the environment starting from a very young age. So the work under the International Geoscience and Geo uh, Park Program of UNESCO also contributes to research and capacity building projects around the world related to land restoration. 
This is supported by the global network of some 10,000 scientists around the world who actually focus on earth science and geological heritage of what earth provides to us. Now, UNESCO, through its Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, is leading the implementation of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, which has started on the 1st of January 2021. With this global initiative and the vision of the science we need for the ocean we want, it will bring together actors across the globe to generate essential knowledge to underpin the coastal and marine ecosystem restoration. We look forward to working with all the partners across the world to ensure the strong synergies between these two global initiatives. It is worth noting that UNESCO schools network, since we are the education um, organization for the UN system, the schools network actually brings together UNESCO's chairs and specialized centers, but also the category two centers under the auspices of UNESCO who provide technical support for restoration activities and capacity building in land restoration training programs, such as uh, one center, which I'd like to note in uh, called the Grow Center, is providing specific support to capacity development in Iceland and across the world. So the announcement of the Human Nature Panel, which we're announcing here today, is really historic because the UN's decade of uh, ecosystem restoration requires us to convene diverse actors, players, cultures and, and emphasize human shared values to transform mindset. So the strategy of the UN decade on ecosystem restoration outlines the establishment of a so-called panel on human nature in support of the UN decade and the SDGs. This panel with the multidisciplinary team of global thought leaders and opinion makers will support the global restoration movement and we'll be asking the big questions about our relationship as human societies with nature and to develop as appropriate values and ethic-based narratives for humanity of how to care, how to restore ecosystems across all cultures and faiths. So this panel would inspire, advise, and amplify the narrative for global ecosystem restoration and movement for the 2021-2030 agenda and beyond. Um, dear participants, it is my pleasure to announce to you that UNESCO shall establish and lead the Human Nature Panel in close collaboration with UNEP, with FAO as lead agencies of the UN Decade. And this panel represents an essential contribution to the lasting success of the UN Decade. It will be convened, of course, uh, in 2022 for a mandate of approximately one year and beyond. And I would like to call upon all actors, all participants, all stakeholders to join the movement of the Human Nature Panel. After all, it is possible. We can change. We can improve our ethics of care and work together for the global good and restoring back the biodiversity, restoring back nature and its ecosystem services. It's possible and it's possible only if there is participation from all actors and a holistic way forward. Thank you very much.